The Golden Knights are on hiatus for the All-Star break, nine days remaining. We recap the last two games before the break, a VGK split, and we bring you up to date on player moves coming your way next right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Tony Cardasco, Chris Collick from Las Vegas and making us your first listen. Make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel, Locked On Golden Knights. We are brought to you today by FanDuel. And we remind you that it's the Super Bowl coming your way. And the current line has San Francisco minus one and a half at FanDuel. And the total on the game is 48 points. And if you join right now, you get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of five dollars or more wins so chris vgk heads into the all-star break but several other teams play up until this wednesday so so rigged and when vgk returns they will try um, to halt the oilers 16 game win streak uh second best of all time one win away from tying the penguins in 1992 93 and uh, that'll be coming up on February the 6th. So something to look forward to after the break. So that's the game where they could tie the record against the Golden Knights. So Edmonton's on. Okay, so Edmonton has no more games right now. So that's that's still pretty cool. I mean, yeah. what, what a spot for Vegas to want to be awake, huh? Yeah, for sure. And so uh, let's go back here, recap this weekend, and then talk. We're going to be talking for the next nine days about what's ahead and what transpired through the first 50 games of the season. And so VGK wrapped up, Chris, uh, the final games. Um, it was a split, a win, and a loss over the weekend. The last game, the loss in Detroit, we'll focus on that. VGK dug a hole early in that game, down two to, set, uh, two to zip in the first seven minutes of play. And then we had Barbashev and Paul Cotter scoring within three minutes. And for Cotter, it was his first goal in 16 games. But uh, VGK uh, would not score again as they fell in that contest 5-2 to two heading into the break. It was a lackluster effort, I think, by VGK. And Logan Thompson, probably no one needed the break more than him. Yeah, I mean, Logan, I think, went 19 to 22 games once Aiden Hill went down. So, you know, it wasn't a good game by by Logan. He made some good saves, and there was some weirdness to that game. But, I mean, what are you going to do? <sighs> Veldor Afia being off that line with Chandler and um, and Mark Stone. What What's up there? I mean, all of a sudden, I was just looking at the event summary here. Mark Stone is a minus two. Chandler Stevenson is a minus two. I mean, Pavel Dorofiev is really etched his his spot into the lineup right now and the importance that he has. So me and Chris talked about this on the Saturday, Chris and Chris edition of Locked on Vegas Golden Knights. I felt the letdown coming. It had that vibe. But then the Golden Knights, they came back. They had life. Like it seemed like, okay, mm -hmm. this is going to be just a remarkable road trip. And it wasn't to be. Coach Cassidy seemed to shrug it off a little bit. I think he's ready for the break. So, you know, what are you going to do? BGK 5-2 and two down the stretch the Golden Knights against the East. And this is what's going to matter if they are going to repeat as Stanley Cup champions. 6-1-1 one and one against the East, which is really good if they're looking to repeat. Sure, but I mean, unfortunately, that's not going to help them win a division and get a higher seating when it comes to the playoffs. So good, yes, and we'll let Cassidy deal with that. Hopefully the Golden Knights can get to that point, but... I mean, it's good that they got 12 points against 13 points against the East. That's what I see versus a potential Stanley Cup situation. And the Golden Knights up until that game against Detroit, they had a six game point streak. And so they were able to bank some points going into the break. What are they like fourth or fifth overall in the West now? Yeah, something like that. I got. I yeah, got they sort right of dropped. Here. And as hot as we thought VGK is, and I know 
uh, the VGK fans want to believe that they are the team at the top, but they still trail Vancouver by seven points at the break currently in the Pacific Division. We have the surging Edmonton Oilers. And then over in uh, the rest of the West, you've got all sorts of action going on with Colorado and Dallas and Winnipeg. And so it's going to be a battle down to the end, and you have to get as many points as possible. And I felt as though VGK did a good job in banking points late here before the break. They're in the playoffs by 11 points. Um, Not that I look at the Golden Knights as a wild card team potentially, but it's important to look at both sides of it. 11 points in the playoffs. Like you said, trailing Vancouver by seven points. Not ideal. Edmonton is obviously the team that's going to have all the eyes on it right now, but the Golden Knights are two points ahead of where they were last year this time. One game less played. We'll talk later about returning you know, players and stuff, but looks like reinforcements are right around the corner. They're going to start trickling in, perhaps, and it should be a strong finish for the Golden Knights. I mean, I think all eyes go to Mark Stone in his back right now. If Mark Stone can I – mean, gosh, what if Mark Stone somehow plays 82 games this season? Like Biggest surprise. You and I said 50. You and I said 50 games. Yep. He's there yep. right now. He is He's there, there right, right now. now. Yeah, for sure. And, again, we'll be talking over the next uh, nine days or so – about uh, a lot of the positions and what's been going on and who's played well and who hasn't. And again, I think uh, Logan Thompson needs the break last year going into the All-Star break. This was a team, Chris, that lost four straight games, right, if we go back to a season ago. And so they've got more momentum, I think. And then when they come out of the break, they have to start and pick up the pieces from where they left off. And a lot of players are starting to come back. And they're going to get healthier, I think, here uh, in short order right after the break. If memory serves, a couple of things. Shea Theodore was out long term. He came back the final game, which I think was against the Islanders, if I'm not mistaken, before last year's All-Star break. A little bit of a jump there. Mark Stone obviously was out long term and some other players. Uh, Golden Knights finished last year's four-game road trip before the All-Star break 0-2-2. and So, yes, four losses. And I think I could be wrong, but I think they finished two and eight leading up to the All-Star break as well. So year over year, there's a lot to like and a lot more injuries. So the glass is definitely a lot more than half full for the Golden Knights as they're as they head to the All-Star break. Coming up next, Jonathan Marcheseau's hat trick. He led the VGK to a five to two victory over the Rangers on Friday night. We so recap that ago. game, and then we'll have returning players and everything else that's going on with trans- transactions for the VGK coming your way in a short while. Back with more right after this on Lockdown Golden Knights. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much, much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you are looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the most valuable player and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights, Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks so much for making us your first listen each and every day. We appreciate you doing so. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Locked On Golden Knights. And don't forget, uh, on Friday, it's WTF, What the Friday. Saturdays, it's the Chris and Chris exclusive on YouTube. And that is an awful lot of fun. So, did you feast on a lot of football on Sunday? No. No. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no we, we had an impromptu trip, actually. Um, we took the kids to a park, and then Amanda said, let's go... We went to Hemingway Hemingway Park, which is that big horn sheep park out like towards Hoover Dam. So Boulder we went City, there, yeah. and then we just yeah. and then we decided we went to the bowling. We went to Boulder Bowl. We bowled a game. Amanda Amanda's the winner of the family, even though I'm the bowler wow. of the family. Amanda's the winner, 
I didn't have my shoes or my bowling balls, and I, I put on house shoes, so relax. It's okay. Okay. So um, what did she bowl? What did she bowl? I, don't I know you're a good little, bowler. She shot like one oh something. I shot like one oh something as well. I house ball, no shoes, bum arm, bum elbow. It's okay. Bum arm. I gotta get back into shape. I'm gonna I'm okay. get back into bowling shape. I got my I got the national tournament in about three months. So this is this is the start of training right now. We'll be yeah. uh, cracking eggs and, and chasing chickens in no time. Don't worry. Are you going back to Reno again? So you get blasted. It's in Vegas this year. It's in, it's in okay. Vegas this year. So you won't be getting blasted by that national podcast and the bowling podcast. Oh God, I forgot about those guys. Well, who's on there? Like Johnny Petraglia or someone? I Johnny can't. Petrangelo's it's kid. Johnny Petrangelo it's Jr. Petrangelo. Yeah, it was <laughs> Petraglia. It was Chicklets Petrangelo version of bowling. What is it? It's the spit and chicklets. It's a, it's the bowling version of spit and chicklets. <laughs> it was awesome. Okay, so I was the VG. imbecile of the, of the week. It was great. <laughs> That's right. Someone you were the imbecile me. of the week, and he he just he basks in that glory of uh, of becoming that that name that honor. It's all okay. downhill from here, brother. VGK was sharp Friday night uh, back in New York. It seems like a long time ago. Jonathan Marsha, so with the hat trick over six games, he had eight goals and six assists. On the heater. Unbelievable. And uh, Keegan Colasar had a beautiful goal in that game. Sheldon 20 miles Rampal. an hour clocked. How much? 20? 20 miles an hour. They clocked him. Sheldon Rampal also uh, had a goal. And uh, Barbashev, three assists in that game. A lot of pe- people just were blasting Barbashev earlier this season. We knew that he would come around. Mm-hmm. And Nick Waugh had a couple of assists. A good overall effort uh, before... VGK just let it down there when they traveled to Detroit on that back end of the back to back. You couldn't see my hand up when you said people blasting Barbashev early on. I was definitely uh, asking questions about Barbashev. I, I, I liked him. I liked him. And I said he'll come around. But I also I was wrong about uh, the Edmonton Oilers because as soon as I said, there's no way, Chris, that they're going to make the playoffs. They win 16 straight. I said, no way. You said, yeah, yeah, I'll give you credit. Yeah, no, I'm, the, I, I was much, the imbecile of the month. Imbecile of the month. I'm sure viewers will make. I'll take that comment somewhere else. We'll just see what rolls in with that. Um, back to the Ranger game. I mean, you know, Gold Knights did everything right. They scored first. They scored often. Very heavy game. Much heavier game. Um, no one like in the local media that I saw, besides noticing that Dorofia had left the game. Yeah, no one knew why. And all of a sudden, the next day, Truba has a hearing. What the heck is going on here? Um, so once I saw Truba had a hearing and once the video surfaced, the first thing I did was I went on whatever website tells you who's been suspended and fined before. Truba had been suspended for head contact on none, none other than Mark Stone when he was with the Ottawa Senators. So repeat offender, uh, been fined as well one or two times for various incidents. So once I saw that, once I saw the elbow on Dorofiev, I knew Trubo was getting suspended. So two games seems fair. I mean, it just it wasn't a hockey play at all. Dangerous play. Knock Dorofiev out of the game. Uh, thankfully, it's the all-star break. So hopefully Dorofiev will be good to go coming out of the all-star break. And, you know, more more um, reinforcements coming back. But just a much better game by the Golden Knights. Aiden Hill, I mean, big difference in net right now. And I don't mean like as far as talent. I guess, yes, there is a talent difference, but just in the way the two manage the net. Logan looks a little more like Marc-Andre Fleury at times, moving around faster, maybe more herky-jerky mo- uh, movements, where Aiden Hill uses that tall and wide frame to play a positional game. And I hate to say it like this, but he plays a Robin Leonard style if Robin Leonard was in better shape and had you know better things happening with his body. I hate to say yeah. it like that, but that's the reality. Okay, on on the broadcast the other night, they said that uh, they were talking about Aiden Hill and that he was talking about everything but the Golden Knights. Apparently, if you watch watch yeah. Twitter, <laughs> right? No, they did talk about the Golden Knights, but they were talking about how Aiden Hill is more like Sean Burke because they're both tall goaltenders and they cover a lot of space and yeah, tall and a little bit rangy. Uh, but definitely, it appears as though Aiden Hill is more settled in that, if that's the case. And I want to ask you about something you tweeted out, which I thought was really observant, where you talked about Aiden Hill getting beaten on the glove side. So is that his weakness? 
a la what we saw from uh, Brosua, where he got uh, beat top shelf all the time. Is that the case? Maybe. I mean, it could be coincidence, too. I mean, dude let three pucks buy it, three of 80 pucks or something like that by him or seven, whatever the number was. It was just a, a very small number as far as the amount of shots that have gotten by Aiden Hill. Could be coincidence or it could not be coincidence. I mean, you watch those goals like really none of those were great goals now that you think about it. I mean, go back and watch before people slam me for, you know, saying something negative about Aiden Hill because the Golden Knights fan base will not say anything bad about Aiden. But if Logan Thompson were to step on a bug, like on the a whole world bug, would know about it. If, he were, if, Logan, yeah, if Logan Thompson steps on a ladybug, this whole town will chew him out. And it's not fair, but that's... And they should because um, th those are sacred. Yes, are you, are you, I, mean, Ken, I had a ladybug on his foot or something, and that's how he came up with that that catch in the game. Ken Ken from Sinbin said it well. I think the life of being an NHL goalie. So you know, I get it. It's not right, but that's just what the reality is. But yeah, back to your question. I mean, Logan, or excuse me, Aiden was beat three times, three of three times in his glove for the three goals he gave up. And you watch the goals like they weren't really screens. It was just they were pretty clean shots. I'm not saying they're bad goals that he gave up, but. The only three goals he gave up were on his glove side. So it's something to watch and keep in the back of your head, you know, what's how how teams are going to attack Aiden and the Golden Knights because if the fourth and fifth goals are glove side goals, now you know something. And if if, uh, if if an amateur like me is seeing this from the telecast, you know these very highly paid NHL scouts and coaches who watch the video, the secret's already out. You know, uh, we're talking about the Rangers, and you know I'm a Ranger fan, full disclosure, but uh, Peter Laviolette uh, was saying, so it's still a loss to him that really hurts because the Rangers came back in the back-to-back -back on their end, and they beat Ottawa like 7-2. to two and They then did. It was a really game. good game. Really good game. Yeah, because they had to come from behind again. Uh, but Laviolette was just saying after the game how they let the game against VGK get away and he was really upset with his team that they lost that contest. And so uh, VGK sweeps the Rangers this season. And uh, I thought it was one of their better games. And again, there's so many pieces that they've had to put in place there with all the injuries and such. And Bruce Cassidy, again, to his credit, has done a really good job, especially down the stretch, with putting all those pieces together and making it a success for the VGK. Uh, listen, Cassidy spin the dials the right way, right? Brisson gets a goal. Next game, he's okay. They play it back-to-back. -back. Okay, kid, you're going to sit. We're going to bring Rempolin, who's a little bit better when it comes to a heavier game and the tired legs and everything. Rempel gets a goal. Okay, fine. Isn't Rempel, isn't he technically a, a rookie? Because He's a pop. Back he's, he's, played, he's like 25 NHL games, but a lot more AHL games. I get that, and people were chirping me a little bit on social. Chirping me. They were chirping me. Because I said rookie me. and rookie, and I get I get all the sides. But fine, whatever. Rem, Rem, Rempel is an older player, but he's a pup as far as the NHL is concerned and experience goes. That said, he is a bigger body with more professional experience. So I get why Cassidy decided to keep him in because look what he did. He just, he just scores goals. He scores goals. It's fun. It's, it's good to watch. And, you know, again, Maybe there's not enough, you know, you and I talk about, but you don't hear it a lot outside. You got to give some credit to what's happening down in Henderson right now as these players are making differences. Ron Bjerg is good on the kill. Uh, Fraze is doing a fine job out there. Uh, Korzak really is is molding into an everyday NHL player right now. Pahal, he's low on the depth chart, but he's there if needed. So, you know, you got to give uh, Craig a, a lot of a lot of love and support for how he's developing talent down there and getting them ready to play uh, Coach Cassidy's game. Well, we talked about this at the beginning of the season and how now at Henderson at that level they play the same style, and you should it should just be plug and play, right? Because it's the same system that they're running for VGK, and it should be a lot more seamless, if you will, when you have to call up those players. Well, and the fact that when it happens on a whim, you know, they practice, well, it should be 20 minutes up the road, but it's not because of all the dang construction in this town still. And by the it's way, they're still, still tearing still down rich. F1. They're still tearing oh down goodness. F1, Tony. Are you kidding me? Still tearing I, down F1. That bridge finally came down this past week, but they're going to start still construction for next there year's on race. Flamingo? Yeah, credit what uh, Alan Snell for uh, pointing that out and how he covers the business side of sports in this town. He did but, a great yeah. job on that.
No, uh, he did. Up, he's, he, he's torched him. I, he should. I love it. And he should. Exactly. Coming up next, one player returns from the LTIR. Not my favorite. And we had some players sent down to aforementioned Henderson. We'll get into all that. We return right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate, especially those right here in the Valley in Las Vegas. It's finally real, right? It's finally happening as we have the two teams that are going to go at it, Kansas City from the AFC, and we have San Francisco from the NFC coming here to Vegas. It's America's number one sports book. It's FanDuel, and hopefully we don't have to call this the big game. And if you're like us, Super Bowl is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. FanDuel has so, so many ways for you to end this season with a W or two or even three. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl and Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers join today. You will get $200 in bonus bets on your first $5 bet if that wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the National Football League. Back from Las Vegas on this Monday edition of Lockdown Golden Knights, Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. We appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day and find us wherever you get your podcast. And please subscribe to that YouTube channel, which is Locked On Golden Knights. So, Chris, do you know where you're going to watch the Super Bowl this year? Here? No? Home? Yeah, just at home. Yeah, even though it's here in the I, city. I, I wish I can sneak my kids over to the bridge off like what Hualapai over there and get a peek at things, but I gotta think anything breathing room within within you know a one mile radius, unless you're driving on 15, you're not gonna get anywhere near near the building. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting though to see all those folks in town and Niner fans and Chiefs fans and the two teams staying at Lake Las Vegas. Um, so you've got uh, the Weston. That'll be home for the Chiefs. That's why I give them the edge because I like that more than the Hilton at Lake Las Vegas. Okay, I'm going to give the edge there, but they're right down the street. But there's no gaming at either resort, and they're in and out. You've got police escorts. 20 minutes, you're there, door to door. You'll get to the stadium. It should be pretty interesting and exciting, and we'll have some updates. I always like the props, and there's going to be uh, some VGK and Super Bowl props. Again, like there were last year. So all over the city, there's all sorts of props. That's what I look forward to. I really enjoy the props every year for Super Bowl. And even more so this year, it really kicked in. It really did. When I find now it's reality, right? We've got the teams. We know what's happening. And it's going to be exciting here in the city. I'm looking forward to it. Are you? At least that it is. Yeah, no, there's fun props that I love to see in this. Um, You'll see a prop that's like. uh, Aiden Hill, how many times? To be beaten glove side, glove side, Aiden Hill. How many times will drop a stick? No, um, shots on goal for the Vegas Golden Knights versus points scored by one of the teams. That could be one of them. Uh-huh. Um, another prop that that actually my buddy Chris Condo's got to give him credit for this one. Uh, we were out to lunch with a buddy of ours who had, had a high sports book role with Caesars Entertainment at the time, and we were talking about, we were, we were developing props. We were just BSing about props to do. And I think uh condo spit out the prop, uh, the height prop, the height of the player to score the first touchdown. And then uh, my buddy got interviewed talking about the prop, but not condo, oh. but the person who ran the books. And uh, he said, yeah, early money's on the short dudes. And I think it was uh, what, Isaiah the, the, Seville. Isaiah oh, no. Seville. The <laughs> Falcons, the Falcons. Uh, this was the, the Patriots Falcons that, that year. Yeah, that year. Freeman. Freeman, I think, got it. He's a short dude. Yeah. Okay. Uh, One of my favorite props of all time. One time, I bet on Shaquille O'Neal free throw percentage against the total of the game. And it was the Bengals. Was it Bengals Niners? It's way back. Way back, right? When they were playing. uh, And Shaq hits 8 out of 10. So it's 80%. So there's no way 80 points were going to be scored it was his best free throw shooting game ever and i took Shaq. i said even if he hits 50 percent 
I don't know if this total is going to go over, but that was my favorite of all time. Back to hockey. Back to there's a hockey podca- a podcast show. Yeah. Okay. Lars Carlson. Lars, Lars Bar Carlson. Activated off of the LTIR on Sunday. Vegas Bjorn has, as he comes back from the break, a 13 game scoreless streak. He's not scored a point in 13 games. Uh, so, okay, where was this guy if he's able to come off of the LTIR on Sunday? Was he touring with ABBA? Like, where was this guy? Leave it to Tony, folks, to keep that receipt in his back pocket that uh, it's been 13 games prior to Carlson missing all the games after the the Winter Classic to pull that out. So that's Tony for you, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, the, the interesting thing is how... I don't know if I don't think they can just put him back on LTIR. I don't think this is like um, a weird salary cap move that needs to be done. Maybe it is. I don't know how this works. Um, but it seems like the Golden Knights are confident there's a nine day window where he's going to be okay. So the fact that it looks like Carlson comes back first game after the All Star break against Connor McDavid and the Oilers, that's certainly welcome news to say the least. Some of the other moves could be, you know, just more to keep Rasan and company busy during the all-star break. And then maybe they will come back to the golden Knights after, right. you know, the all-star break is over. Who knows, but definitely William Carlson coming back is important. Puckpedia said that to activate Shea Theodore off of LTIR. So maybe is he close? Um, $713,000 would have to be cleared. Is, is he coming back anytime soon? Shea Theodore. Uh, if you were zero. to put them in order, who would be coming back after Carlson? Carrier. Okay. Carrier and, and Car- Hutton, Theodore. All right. Could happen, right? And then I go, you think. The other Vegas Bjorn? Yeah. Bjornstrom. That guy. I don't even know. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> Bjorn Fox. Bjorn Fox. <laughs> Bjorn Foot. Whatever. I call them Bjornstrom. <laughs> I just make up names. Uh, and then Jack Eichel, you think, is long term. I mean, you know, there's a lot of credible people who have said four to six weeks from basically last week. Um, I heard some scuttlebutt that it could be season ending. I don't know. I mean, it's all hearsay right now and everything. And put you like this, if if you hear about McCrimmon kicking some tires on some bigger players, you'll have a better idea of what might be happening. So I hope Eichel's not long term. If it is season ending and he comes back for the first game of the playoffs, Lord help us. Oh, my God. Oh. Never hear the end of that. Oh, my God. Sent to Henderson um, over the past couple of days, Brendan Brisson, Sheldon Rampol, Jonas Ron Bjorg, and Byron Fraze. Um, and so... Oof. It's going to be a good team. As you said earlier, right, you put them down, you more or less stow them in Henderson, and then as needed, because they get some reps in now, uh, as needed, you start to bring them back up. That's the case, right? You know, I could be wrong, but I thought they don't even come. Back. I thought the Silver Knights don't even play until like Friday or something like that. So okay. you wonder because the Golden Knights will be playing them the following Tuesday. That game, but they against still Edmonds. practice, out, right? They'll still be practicing. Well, they'll be no. practicing, yeah. So that yeah. they want to keep them on the ice and keep them sharp. That's a good point. Now, what about VGK? So when do they officially return to the ice for practice? Probably do they have a few day, days have off. To say. So they'll have it's, in another it's week, pro- they'll have a full week off. Yeah. Today. I mean, this, I don't think this is like a hard stop as far as like the holiday freeze and stuff goes. So I think teams are probably free to come back after the break at their leisure based on when their first game, I could be wrong on that. I don't know. Um, if that's the case, they'll have a pregame skate the day of the game and right back to it, or they'll have a practice the day before, but either way, they'll be ready. And the, and the playing field will be even for both teams too. So it's not a big deal. Any interest in the all-star game without no. VGK players? Same here. Like, I have I no interest if it. there were VGK players. To be I fair. know, but we do for news value and to keep up with the team. We do have to follow. Sure, it, of course. Obviously. Yeah. But now absolutely. we no. don't really have to care, do we? Skills competition is is kind of cool. I say kind of cool because it's not nearly what it used to be. Um, depends on which fluff they have. If they have a bunch of nonsense happening outside the stadium and a bunch of weird stuff and making a mockery of the breakaway drill or the, of the shootout, you know, competition, fine, you know, whatever. But the hardest shot is still cool. Fastest skater is still cool. Some of the weird obstacle courses are cool. And when the goalies get to shoot for empty nets, like that stuff's kind of cool, but some of the stuff, 
I don't know, that blackjack game outside on the strip and shooting pucks at the Blasio uh, fountain. I don't need any of that garbage this year. Yeah, I liked uh, the worst one. Worst idea was hitting at the cards where they flip over. Just silly. Coming up again tomorrow, we'll continue with all the news that happens. Anything that breaks we might have more players uh, coming and going, activated and what have you. And we'll get to all that. We'll talk more about, uh, again, just any types of analysis uh, through the first 50 games. We'll recap the first 50 games. Maybe this is how we plan our show, folks. Yeah, because we do every 10 games, right? First 50 games, I think, 10, 10 game increments. We appreciate everyone tuning in. And thank you so much, especially our everydayers. And please make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel that's Locked On Golden Knights. From a man, Chris Golick, I'm Tony Cardasco saying so long for now from Las Vegas. We appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Locked On Golden Knights. And take care.